Comfort. Who doesn't want comfort? Raise your hand. Who wants comfort? Raise your hand. I think it's unanimous. We all want comfort, don't we? Now, sometimes comfort comes in different ways. Comfort can come in an ice cream cone. Comfort can come in flowers. Oh, that's right, it's Valentine's Day. Comfort can come in what? Chocolate. Who doesn't love chocolate? Comfort can come in a lot of different forms. But as I use this phrase often, what sticks? Does the ice cream cone stick? Yes, if we get it on us, it does stick. Does the chocolate stick? It's great tasting. Chocolate's awesome. Amen? I think everybody would attest to that. But how long does that enjoyment last? After today, after Valentine's Day is all over with, and your sweetheart or significant other has offered candy, flowers, maybe dinner later, Monday morning's back to work, back to the normal routine. What happens Monday? All of a sudden, Valentine's Day is a thing of the past. Amen? It's done and gone. I fulfilled my obligation. The ice cream cone and the chocolate is temporary. It is here but for a season. We are to put our trust in our Lord and Savior, that only, the only one that provides the comfort to each one of us. And the comfort that sticks. The comfort that lasts beyond a day. I don't know for you, but for me, I don't want comfort just on Valentine's Day. I want comfort every day. Do I get comfort every day? Absolutely not. None of us do. The world curves, takes us in curve balls all the time. The world takes us down roads that we struggle with all the time. If we conform to this world, we will live a sad life. We will have obstacles, we will have struggles, we will have dismay. But when we offer ourselves to Him, he will provide the comfort that passes all understanding. He will be there when we have an automobile accident. He will be there when we get a negative test from the doctor. He will be there in those troubling times. A newborn coming into this world, the miracle of a baby coming into this world, and to know and understand that there could be challenges and difficulties. You and I cannot do anything about that baby's condition and in coming into this world. This is our God, Lord and Savior, that can only be part of that. Amen? He's the only one that has the answer to it. And the more we want to give ourselves to God, the more comfort you're going to receive because God wants favor on his children. God is waiting to pour himself upon us. He's waiting at the door, as I shared earlier. He's waiting at the door for us to open it. Not just a little bit, to let him in a little bit. Oh, I'm going to shut it. I'm not ready for you, God. Only want a little bit. Oh, let me open a little bit more. That's ten years, ten years down the road. We opened it a little bit more. Okay. Oh, okay, we're... 30 years in, they opened the door halfway. We let God in a little bit. We're not ready to totally, fully let him in the door yet. So we close the door again. When are we going to come to the realization to open the door and be free to let God to be part of our lives? When is that moment going to happen? I can only answer that for me. You can only answer that for you. Nobody else can answer that for you. And I haven't looked at my script yet at all, so we're, buckle up, we'll be here a couple hours for sure. So, no, I, I do get going, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Comfort, we all want it. We all want it. 
Comfort isn't comfort unless we give it away. That's an interesting comment, wouldn't you say? Comfort isn't comfort unless we give it away. How do we get comfort? Think about this now. How do we get comfort? Typically, comfort comes from other people. Other people help us with this comfort. Yeah, we can have the ice cream and the chocolate and all of that, and we know that that's temporal, but where do we truly get comfort? The peace in our soul that passes all understanding. Where do we get it? It's a rhetorical question, but where do we get it? It's kind of like love isn't love until you give it away. As I introduced a song, a, a gentleman from Hudson Falls, Jerry Mab, had introduced to Hudson Falls. He wrote the song, but it's love isn't love until you give it away. It's a wonderful song. It's giving it away. It's about taking ourselves out of the equation. I would say to a past pastor years, it's really about getting ourselves out of the way. You see, our natural, our natural being is selfish. We are selfish people. You can choose to believe that or you can choose not to believe that. We, you and I, are selfish people. And to break that barrier to give is a challenge. It's a challenge. There's no other way to say it. It's a challenge to break the trend of being selfish. Want, want, want. You're talking to somebody when I was young, I grew up, I didn't have much. When I, I wanted to be independently wealthy when I was 30 years old. Now, God was part of my life, my whole life growing up. And I knew that, but I didn't recognize that. Big difference. But I wanted to be independently wealthy when I was 30 years old. Ask me how that went. It didn't go very well. God used a 4x4, four four. I've been in construction my whole life. He used a 4x4 four four first, but then he had to go to a 6x6 six six later in life because I never got it. I never got it. I never... Did I have comfort my whole life? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was about this world. I was about the, the toys in the world. I was about working. I'm the breadwinner. I'm going to bring home the money to put the food on the table. I'm going to do all of that stuff. But God says, no, 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 no. I have other plans for you. Do you want to listen to me? Or do you want to keep doing what you do? I smartened up, but it was unfortunately many, many years later. 25 years ago, I finally woke up. A light bulb went off. I am no longer the same. And I give him credit and I give him all the praise and honor and glory. Webster Dictionary says, to give strength and hope to, comfort, to give strength and hope to, or to ease the grief or trouble of. So those statements in the Webster Dictionary isn't about us. It isn't about us. It's about to. It's about ease the grief or trouble of. Of who? Of whom? What are you? What am I? What do I offer to ease the grief and the trouble of somebody? Who am I to give hope and strength to somebody? The dictionary doesn't say to give me strength and hope so that I can live tomorrow. It doesn't say that. It's not about me. It's not internal. It's external. And it's coincidental that that's the definition of comfort. When we internalize comfort like an ice cream cone, or how about those chocolates on this special day, they become self-gratifying, which is okay, but what does God tell us about comfort? What does God tell us about comfort? We're going to dig into that. But first we're going to do a funny, because I like doing a funny every week. So, Satan in the church. Don't be misled, Satan's here too. Even though we have God right down front here, paying attention to what we're doing and saying, and where our heart is, Satan's there. One bright, beautiful Sunday morning, every, everyone in tiny Gettysburg wakes up early and goes to their local church. Before the service starts, the townspeople sit 
in their pews and talk about their lives and their families. Suddenly at the altar, Satan appears. Everyone starts screaming and running for the front entrance, trampling each other in their determined efforts to get away from the evil incarnate. Soon everyone is evaluated from, evacuated from the church except for the one man who sits calmly in his pew. Seemingly, obviously to the fact that God's ultimate enemy is in his presence. This confuses Satan a bit. Satan walks up to the man and says, Hey, don't you know who I am? The man says, Yep, sure do. Satan says, Well, aren't you afraid of me? The man says, Nope, sure ain't. Satan disturbed. He's getting angry. And why aren't you afraid of me, the man says. Why aren't you afraid of me? The man says, Well, I've been married to your wife for 25 years. <laughs> if you love that, give God a hand. Amen. Amen. This was Paul's third letter written to the church of Corinth, which two were lost, coincidentally. But Paul, Paul persevered because he was a humble ambassador for Christ. We talked about an ambassador for Christ last week. Paul was a humble ambassador for Christ. There wasn't much that would waver from his presence of Christ in his life. There's a message right there that how many things do we face in life, peer pressure or other, where we conform to the situation. We, we struggle with that. Peer pressure isn't just for little kids. They have that at school too with the bullying and all of that. We as adults have those same kind of issues. We have the same kind of issues. We're not exempt from it. Paul was such a good example for ways for us to live our lives. I just really like Paul. I've been reading a lot more of Paul and what his ministry was all about. Paul was constantly reminding and preaching to the church about the struggles, the conflicts, and the false teachers that were abundant then. There were so many false teachers back then. And that people could only find comfort if Jesus, in Jesus Christ. That was Paul's message. You want comfort? It's in the Word of God. It's not a drive through it's not a, you know, casual Bible study. It's the Word of God that will sustain us. And we'll get into that some more. But let's share, let's share the Scripture, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Let's share this together out loud if we could. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a message. This is Paul writing. It's a message that the comfort comes from God. I think that's one of the things we want to carry from here today. The comfort is, isn't what the world offers. The comfort comes from what God offers to our lives. But and I'm going to talk about the last statement in that scripture. And I'm going to ask you to hold on to that because the last statement in there is really, really important to what we do with comfort. Isn't that similar to today? Life circumstances, challenges, stress, medical, job, finances, the devil, false teachings. They're, they're, we still have that. 2,000 years ago, there were astrologers and false teachers, and there were, there were so many obstacles in life. We have the same kind of things today. That didn't just happen 2,000 years ago. Those obstacles are still in our lives today. We might label them differently today, but they're still there. They're still there. They're still part of what we do. What is it for you? What is it for me? So in verse 4, Paul instructs us where comfort comes from. 
who comforts us in all our troubles, and what we are to do with it. Let's go back to Webster, to give strength and hope to or to ease the grief or trouble of. Isn't that just what God wants us to do? Webster's got it absolutely right on. That's what God wants us to do. God is commissioning us to go and comfort people, to help people in their time of need. Give it away. I think that's what's really important here at the end of verse 4. We have to be a humble ambassador for Christ so that we can be healed and strengthened to endure life's obstacles. Amen? Amen. That was weak. I need an amen. Amen. It's hard to give something you don't have, but with God all things are possible for those that love him. The end of verse 4, troubled with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Now I'm going to go back to, we're not all equipped to comfort other people. I mean, think of something like a caregiver. There's certain people that are caregivers for other people, and there's some people that are not caregivers. I'm not a caregiver. My mother came down with cancer 15, 16 years ago. My brother was the caregiver. I was the spiritual person for strength. And that's what I offered because that's who I was. We're not all equipped to give and to be that caregiver. All of us play different roles. But it's about, it's about giving. Giving strength. Giving encouragement. Giving hope to other people. That's where our comfort comes from, people. That's where our comfort comes from. Helping other people. Doing for other people. We're not all equipped for it. But I can assure you every single person in this sanctuary this morning is equipped with something, something to help someone. Every one of us are equipped with it. God takes care of his people. He will... He will empower us and give us courage and strength to go through the eye of a needle. He will do that. Do you believe that? Do you believe that with your heart? Many think, when, many think that when God comforts us, the hardship should go away. But if that were always so, people would turn to God only to be relieved of the pain and not out of love for him. See, there's a misnomer in society where, I mean, and I hear, I hear, I have conversations often with people. God did this to my family member. God did this, and he hurt me, and he hurt this, and that's why I turned from God. Those are excuses. Those are blatant excuses why a person would turn from God. It's about opening your heart and being compassionate and letting God through the door. That's what it's about. Letting God to be part of it. You don't turn to God when you're in trouble. Even though most people think that's what he's there for. That's not what he's there for. He's to celebrate the joys of a new baby. He's to celebrate the joys of a new boyfriend or girlfriend. He's there to celebrate a party, a graduation party, or your child getting married. God is to be there for all of that. And when God is there and part of all of that, you will have joy filling your heart. You won't know what to do with it because it'll be overflowing. The wedding will have a different meaning. The graduation will have a different meaning. The hardships will have a way. They will have a way out. And then you'll find comfort in knowing that you weren't alone, that God was there right with you. Let your test be your testimony. I'm sure everyone in here could share something about some struggle or challenge that they had in their lives. That's probably a pretty safe statement. That's the message 
that the scriptures tell us repeatedly. The Bible is a book of stories. The Psalms are a book of glorious stories. But you have a story to share with somebody. How did you make it through those challenging times? How did you make it through those struggles? If you did it on your own, I can guarantee it was a little more painful. I stand here before you knowing that when God's part of those struggles, it's a little easier. Doesn't mean it's going to go away. It doesn't mean the struggles are going to go away. It means that God wants to be part of who you are. You're a child of God. Whether you want to admit it, whether you want to share it, you didn't get flown in from a pelican and dropped on earth. You were not part of evolution. You are God's children. And he's waiting to pour his favor on you. Let your test be your testimony. The challenges and share your life with one another. We must understand that comfort can also mean receiving strength, encouragement, and hope to deal with our hardships, as I've shared. The more we suffer, the more comfort God gives us. If we are feeling overwhelmed, allow God to comfort you as he can. Anxiety, those things today that, I mean, I think of, you know, my devotions in the morning, this morning, were about those that are challenged uh, spiritually, those that are challenged emotionally, uh, those that are challenged financially, um, the struggles to cope, the lack of work, the, this pandemic has put the world in a, in a topsy-turvy situation. And the anxiety that comes from all of that, we can be relieved of some of that if we let God into our heart and open that door up wide away, wide open, open that door wide open. We do, get, we do get overwhelmed. When we get a medical test, the anxiety of that just rises to a new level. Remember that every trial you endure, you will later become an opportunity to minister, minister to other people suffering similar hardships. So if you have a challenge or an obstacle in your life that has brought you down, you have an opportunity to share with other people, to help them along the way. You see, that's what we're called to do. God is asking us, share your story with one another. How did you deal with that obstacle or that challenge in your life? Because that helps other people deal with that. It helps us. It's to help one another and to be there for one another, to offer strength and encouragement. Let your test be your testimony. Are you a comforter? Not everybody is a comforter. Do you offer kind words, a lending ear? Sometimes you need to just go, listen. There's always a need for something. I think of folks in the nursing home. These people are lonely people. Now we've had this pandemic and quarantine and all of that. These people are lonely people. I would set up and go caroling every Christmas to the nursing homes and shut-ins. And I can tell you, this is only once a year, but they are so excited about us coming. And they gather in a big room, and it's just like, boy, the ministry of going to just sit with somebody. You could open the Bible and read a scripture or read a little story about Tom and Jerry. It wouldn't matter. It's about us positioning ourselves with God to want to give. And we're all equipped with it. We're all equipped to go and help someone. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Mm. God will comfort us in our hardship as we are people of God. We are people of the God for the people of God. If we profess that we are the people of God then we are for the people of God.
Paul also writes comforting words to be firm on in 2 Thessalonians 2.16. I leave you with this statement. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who has loved us and even given us everlasting comfort and hope which we don't deserve, comfort your hearts with all comfort and help you in every good thing you say and do. So God is equipping us. God will be there for us. And what he's asking us to do is the words that come out of our mouth, the kindness, the hope, the encouragement, those words are to be affirming to people of God. Will you do it with me? Will you jump on my wagon? Let's go. God's waiting for you, and he's waiting for me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.